This is our Arctic Acres Growing Dome, the site of our community greenhouse. This didn't just happen overnight. Let's check out how it got built and what we have planned next. Awkward! A major part of the project was completed prior to the arrival of our growing dome. We designed our climate battery and did all the foundation work previously, and you can check that out in the last video. The growing dome itself arrived in a kit from Arctic Acres. We were impressed with how everything was labeled and also in the quality of materials themselves. Recently, Arctic Acres began building their domes out of 2x6, so that was a pretty cool surprise. And it has made it just that much more striking. In order to lead the build, we had Derek Dowdell come down from the Edmonton area. He has a company where he runs his dome building business out of and was a third party contractor recommended to us by Arctic Acres. He's built his own previously and it was great having him down our way as the instructions are easy enough to follow, but having him around allowed us to anticipate what would be next and we could get ahead of any potential problems and be just that much more efficient. Derek was great and incredibly patient, knowledgeable and careful every step of the way. We relied on a crew of volunteers, not really formally scheduling anything and were overwhelmed by the amount of support that we received from staff, students and community members. We really do live in a great community and are so appreciative of everyone who showed up. It made for some long days, thankfully we had the help needed to get the job done. Day one required us to start with the small foundation wall. Everything was pre-marked, so this went relatively quick. After that we attached the sections together and then started to put together the frame. Everything in the kit comes pre-cut, pre-jilled and color coded with where it goes in the dome. As long as you follow everything carefully, it goes together pretty smoothly. With a bit of scaffolding and some ladders, we were able to get it all in place by the end of day one and had everything framed up and ready to go. Day two was all about anchoring the dome to the foundation wall. With everything in the right place, we had to align all the hubs. This required a lot of pry bar work and little by little we worked on getting everything straight and lined up. We also anchored the dome to the foundation by using a hammer drill to drill down into our foundation and then dropping in some anchor bolts and bolting down our foundation wall. We also attached the dome itself to the little wall and made sure everything was tight. This was a pretty full day on its own but in order to get everything ready for glazing the next day we did prep our attic fans and also covered our northern panels with a reflective insulative layer. Day three was then for covering our dome. All of the panels come pre-cut and pre-marked, so for the most part it went pretty smoothly. We started at the top and worked our way down. Meanwhile, Derek and a couple of others worked on our door throughout the day. This was a long day and it was pretty slow going at the top and sped up as we got lower. The last panel went in and then that was it for the brunt of the work. We did still have some other things to do after this, like installing the drip edge on the lower panels, insulating our foundation wall, which we chose to spray foam, and then we also need to cover the interior wall with flashing. We also need to build up our pond, uh, install our in-soil heating and cooling system, kind of like a, a smaller version of our climate battery. And then we also need to tape the seams. Now, the seam taping is a pretty big job, so we're waiting to catch our breath a bit before we actually tackle that part. It was a pretty fast couple of days and we're so incredibly grateful for our staff, students and community volunteers. This ended up being some like 10-12 hour days and they still stuck it out with us until the end. Our staff and community have so much knowledge and we're so thankful for everyone who showed up to help out or even just to pop by and leave a bit of encouragement. I think that deserves a short little montage with how we got here.
You might be wondering why we ended up going with a dome in the first place. I think from the passive solar side, the longer you can get on the east-west and the shorter you can get on the north-south, the more efficient you can be. This gives you the largest amount of solar gain with the least amount of inefficient volume and surface area that needs to be insulated. Our dome isn't like this exactly, but it offered the best balance between being something we could tackle with students, being unique in its design, and then still giving us the ability to operate year-round. In the location that we have it, we also have access to sunlight all hours of the day as it moves across from the east to the west. Uh, Jim Jacobs from Safe Blue Fire and Safety just down the road, he was one of our kind of amazing volunteers, but, but he actually ended up DIYing his own dome in the past. Uh, and he can speak to kind of the incredible strength of the shape. We, we had a tornado go right by our place shortly after I built it and took all kinds of damage to our house and shop. And, and the dome was fine afterwards. It uh, stood up to the wind no problem. And it's been through many windstorms. It's, it's been great. We're looking forward to finishing the perimeter beds and then watching this space evolve over time. Our goal is for this to operate as a community space with no cost associated with it at all. We envision setting aside space for our elementary and junior high students, community groups, and our own high school students as well, where everyone can learn from each other as this space changes over time. We already have plans for an off-grid photovoltaic system, so make sure you have subscribed so you don't miss any of the exciting stuff that we have coming up. Finally, we want to thank all of the donors that made the purchase of our growing dome possible. We went to a lot of these companies with nothing but an idea, and we're only able to get this far with their generous support. We can't wait to see what this space has to offer for our community and are excited to document every step along the way. Catch you next time on Awkward Aquaponics. Awkward.